Hello guys and welcome to Big Al's real fighting video and as promised here's our first video of actual real fighting techniques on real life people. Um, it's actually uh, quite amazing actually whilst we were doing this we were I don't know fighting for roughly 40 minutes um, we actually decided to accumulate qu uh, a, quite a large crowd of people who were wanting to learn. We had one guy who was like 6 foot 10 and, and all the rest of it who wants to be a regular fighter, lives in America as a, a basketball player but uh, uh, originally from England and that so hopefully people like that will start joining in our sparring sessions you never know we might even take over the gym as a little bit of a sparring uh, and fighting technique area but what we have here is for you guys is the, the beginning of our essentially our fight club and what I'm displaying here to uh, my training partner unfortunately I haven't had permission yet to uh, uh, film he, he's fine with filming but but I uh, haven't had like, official forms filmed out for, for YouTube's sake so I've had to blow his face but um, what what we're doing here is we're learning basic, oh, I'm teaching basic clinching techniques and the best way to do that is a baptism of fire. Let's get in there and let's do it. The whole purpose of clinch is once you're up close and personal, once the first few punches of a fight have started, uh, been thrown, generally speaking, whoever's losing the fight will tend to get up close and personal, grab you just to stop getting punched. But if you're superior in the clinch, you can dominate as I am here. The, the whole purpose is to get your arms on the inside of the guard, of the of the opposition's guard. You can see it's like a, a sort of a, a balance, you know, you can see how I'm fighting my way in, uh, the guy in the red t-shirt's also trying to do it, and he's much stronger than I am. I, I'm at a strength disadvantage here, but as you can see, I'm using technique, I'm using a little bit of swings and throws there to sort of ragdoll him a little bit and create gaps for my hands to get in. I can't use power to get in and dominate him. In contrast, now of course, we've got a young lady, uh, uh, who, who actually went to prim, uh, private uh, um, uh, primary school with, and what I am doing with her is less sort of the physical side of things. Uh, I'm teaching her actual proper self-defence uh, techniques to help protect her in the street in case anyone wanted to mug her or you know, you know, uh, well, it's a dangerous world for women, right? But obviously learning the clinch for her is also something very important and I'm just explaining here that yes listen I'm bigger I'm taller but if you make me shorter than you by dragging my head down it doesn't matter that I'm fat to my big bloke if you've got technique you can drag anyone's head down you can you can pin them in place and once you've got their head you can control them and like I'm trying to say here she, she hasn't got much of a killer's instinct but I'm a lot of power though and a lot of uh, talent and technique it's gonna be exciting to see where we can go with her but I'm saying that once you've got my head down bang you knee me you knee me straight to the chin I'm going down I don't care how big and tough you are you get a proper good thrust of the knee to the chin to the jaw you're down and as I'm saying she was just asking me there going oh, I wouldn't have the power or strength to do it and I said well bang Look, one-handed, I'm just taking it down without even trying. Uh, uh, and of course, the same price here. Yes, my strength, my size, my height will help me. But if you've got technique, you can dominate anyone. I've gone up against guys who are six foot ten, way bigger and way stronger than me, and I've been able to put them down with contemptuous ease. Uh, and I'm just trying to show to her now that yes in a fight this is not an ideal situation for yourself. Getting up close and personal, sometimes it's going to happen. Obviously, if the guy knows what he's doing, he's going to come in and try and grab your legs and take you down that way, use his body weight and, and, and momentum to do it. But I, as I'm trying to t tell her, look, you know, like I've just done there, if you swiftly knee someone in the face or you get your head down, most people will panic. Most men will be like, what the hell? Woman's just taking my head down and bang, then a knee. You break their nose, they're going to be panicking, most guys. And that's all you need. That's all you need to do to give you time to run away. Now here, what I'm trying to show to her is how to create gaps. So she can't use strength to create gaps against me. I'm too big, I'm too strong, I'm too heavy. But what I'm trying to show her now is a, a froze, essentially, a little minor froze. It's not to put them on the ground, it's just to create gaps uh, in at the bottom of the arm, by the elbow, to create enough gap like that. Like There she goes, she, she's just done the throw on me, and I'm telling her, put the arm in, put the arm in, and she has, and once she's on the inside, there's not much I can do. She can drag me down, and she can knee me. So, as uh, you can see, these kind of martial art techniques are applicable to females against big men, as well as for men versus men and all that. This is a genderless um, 
uh, martial art. Now, what I'm doing here now is, I, I said, like a lot of the time, guys will just go round the throat. They'll try and throttle you. They'll try and strangle you. And one of the, there's a variety of techniques you can do. I'm like, say, please strangle me, strangle me. Bang. You can grab by the wrists like that. And this is a purely defensive move. Okay. Purely 100% defense. And you can see how easy she took me off. And I've got big, strong hands. On, and I was really wrapping them around the throat. Um, but there are other ways you can do. Um, that's perfect for getting them off you and giving you the time to run but bang as you can see there are aggressive versions of the attack as well one is which I've just done there is where you come on the inside of the guard and you just go straight for the eyes and this is what I was trying to teach uh, the long, young lady here was you must always go for if you've got such sort a of big size and strength disadvantage you have to use what would essentially be called dirty fighting techniques you have to you have to take anything to your advantage you say oh I don't want to hurt you I go yeah but pretend I'm a rapist pretend I'm, I want to hurt you or I want to kill you or want to it was, oh no but you're not like that no no pretend and you can see that's the exactly the same move that I try to get it to do and you can see the aggression you need that killer's instinct you need to be merciless and, and I'm going to try and show again bang so what you do is you're straight on the inside he's got my throat he's got his hand wrapped around my neck at that point and I can reverse it from something where he's got a significant advantage into me gouging his eyes out now I'm going to try and teach him the same thing and he, you can see the fellow here he's trying he's much stronger than me much more muscular and he's trying to use strength to pull me off um, it's not going to happen or if it is he's going to have to work hard for it he's going to waste energy now much more effective techniques bang look I'm not even trying and I neutralize his hands and there you go see I'm trying to say look don't attack the arms attack the wrist to always attack the smallest and the weakest of the joints now I'm trying to teach him here now to come on the inside he went on the outside I'm trying to teach him the eye gouge technique that I just applied to him he can't do it because I've got a strong clinch defense I keep my elbows in narrow and I've got quite big biceps which get in the way um, uh, the fellow there in the blue top uh, he uh, practiced this with me um, also and he was saying no listen if you can't get both arms in then do it one armed do it one handed lead with like your lead arm which would be your left arm for most people and just go in with one hand as you'll do to me now if you can't get both in then it's easier to get one arm in it's less space to try and do it bang and he's got his right hand straight in my eye now I said okay that's fine but two arms is better because watch I can defend against one arm I can't defend against two arms, but I can do a certain defense against one arm. As you can see, I've just grabbed his elbow. It's a little hard. I'm sorry I'm off the camera, but I'll do it again a little bit more on the camera. But this really hurts him. It's <laughs> the second time, I think, it's the last time I do it because he has to walk off. I've <laughs> nearly damaged his elbow, even though I'm going very light. So he's gone in one arm, and I've just... Yeah, it's hard to see because it's so quick, but you work the arm against its joints. You'll see it me doing against the guy in the red top in a minute or so. He's a bit more supple in the joints than that. He's not as old, not as white hair, grey in the hair, so to speak. Um, but he's, I'm trying to say, look, if you can't get in too armed, because my arms are so much longer than yours, yeah, look. He's, at the moment he's got his arm on my, my eye and look, I've pinned his arm and I can do virtually anything I want with him at that point. That's what I'm saying. If you do it, you do it quick. You do it to the point. You go in, bang, you attack and then you get out if needs be. Unless you're in a dominating position where you have both hands on them, in which case you're controlling them completely and minimizing the retaliation that can be brought back upon you. Okay? And we're just practicing some basic self-defense moves at the moment. This isn't my tie. This is actually Pankration, some of the uh, Pomachan and Pankration, the new moves that I've been learning. But now we're starting to introduce a little bit more of my type. But you see, bang, I've got his arm, got his arm, and I've decided, well, okay, I haven't got quite good grip, so bang, I've, I've employed my Muay Thai clinch, and now I'm just showing luck. Now I, I've got you. And he actually <laughs> runs away, which is nice. He breaks it because he's losing that clinch, and that's the right thing to do. If you're losing in a situation, if you're a better striker, take out the clinch and turn it into striking the, the techniques again. But of course, because we're learning, because we're teaching clinch at this point, I don't want him to escape all too often because you've got to learn the, te uh, the, 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 the techniques of, of every single stage of combat. Now, I think we do a minute of uh, sparring here of clinch. Um, it's not full blows at all, nowhere near it, but we're just doing a minute to just knacker, which is a timed minute, uh, knacker one another out. Now, as you can see, uh, the whole purpose is to try and get on the young side and control the head like I am. You see how calm I am? I'm not wasting energy. I'm creating gaps for, you know, elbows. Obviously, th if these were going in full power, 
they'd hurt. They were hurting him anyway. These are like uh, blows that I'm throwing in. I'm not really connecting with the knees as, like I could, but I'm just showing him where he's open and where he needs to defend. He should, at this point, be trying to get his arms back up around my head. If he can't do that, he needs to break, but if he pulls back, he's going to drag his head down and then he's going to stroke to his head. So he can't pull out. Best thing for him to do in this situation is to go forward, try to charge forwards into me and bear hug me and grab me around my waist. Some kind of grip on me is better than nothing. At the moment, he's got no grip. And you can see, just look how much I'm, I'm throwing him around. And um, to be fair to the fella, the reason why he can't do this is because, one, I'm not letting him. I am <laughs> very handy in the clinch. I know exactly what I'm doing. But also, he's knackered. I've knackered the hell out of him. If you think about it, he's got 18 stone resting on him. Thanks for tuning in, guys. There will be another video.